Welcome back to the Stephen Knight Show. Our next guest is a viral sensation who triggers thousands of people who work in corporate America with our hilarious videos. Please help me welcome the one and only Corporate Aaron. Welcome to the Stephen Knight Show. Hi, thank you. It's very, very nice to kind of follow up with you. <laughs> I know you've been, you're a busy woman. You have a lot going on. Let me ask you, how's Q1 going for you? Q1 is jam-packed with client activity, okay? There's a lot of deliverables. There's a lot of calms going on. There's a lot of emailing. But because we block, because we bumped up Black History Month, we already celebrated yeah. in our company. We didn't have to worry about it this February at all. So it's been kind of easy to kind of keep going with our clients, but it's been going very smooth. I'm closing all of my loops. All your loops, okay. And the portals, I know there's a lot of portals, like if someone wants to take time off or they want to uh, put in a request, how do they go about doing that? Okay, so our portal system... It's very advanced, okay? So we have several tech departments that work together cross-departmentally to kind of co-create our portal system, okay? So we have about 92 portals. Okay. They're all in your handbook if you ever get confused. But each portal has an 18 to 32 digit PIN number to log mm -hmm. into a portal that you need to get into. And if you can't get into the portal, sometimes you kind of have to cross-check and authenticate yourself with your other five devices. So you should have all of your devices with you when you're logging into portals. What if you forget your password? Is there a team that can help you? Oh, absolutely. So we have our meet desk management center meet desk. And oh. so if you give them a call and have those pin digit numbers ready, they'll help guide you through the process to kind of get you back into the portal that you need to get into. Now, I know that you have um, you have some Zen, Zen G, Zs on your, um, Gen Zs on your team. And a lot of them are a little resistant to some of the um, after hour meetings and things like that. What What is your advice for them to be successful within the organization? Well, if there are any Gen Zs that want to drive the business forward, they're going to have to work a little harder. They're going to have to work longer hours. They're going to have to commit. They're going to have to look deep within and say, hey, why am I setting up so many boundaries? So maybe it's time for some of them to start going to therapy because they might have a problem with boundaries and they might kind of need to make some boundaries around their boundaries. So I think if they want to be successful, that they should work. If if you thought the day was nine to five, no, it's six to six. Six a to six. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Six a.m. to ten p.m. If you're really if you're really trying to commit. Okay, and I know Lisa. You know, um, she she keeps you busy. Keeps you busy. Oh yeah. 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 What can you tell us about Lisa? Well, she's a phenomenal human being. She's one of the best people in the entire world. I look up to her. A lot of people don't know. She's my guiding light and my source and my source of strength. I love her. She's amazing. Uh, she was a little overwhelmed and kind of needed to take a step back from social media. She kind of wanted to experience living in the real world. Yeah. So I know a lot of people that are like, where is she? She's only kind of living and existing in the real world. So she needed me to kind of come over and take over her social media. And that's kind of taken over a life of its own. But she's an actor. Uh, she, lives, she lives in Chicago. She's also an mm. entrepreneur. And I think she's kind of showing the world what her capabilities full scale are when it comes to marketing and acting and social media and all of the above. So she's a force. Do you feel, do you feel overwhelmed? Uh taking on her social media platforms while she's out there doing her comedy and everything else? Yeah, you know, and I'm really glad that you asked me that. And I'm very happy that I have this space to kind of talk about that because it is kind of overwhelming. Space. Oh, no. It's a, it's overwhelming because she has yeah. like all of these followers and I think they kind of miss her. And, you know, since I've come on, I now have all of these followers and I say, wow, how have you been doing this? It's kind of like a lot to manage. And, you know, there's several portals, there's several profiles. She had me set up a LinkedIn, a Twitter, a, a, another TikTok, another Instagram. And I said, this is a lot of work. And I still have yeah. my regular job as a manager and I still have my family. So, you know, her bandwidth was stretched. And so now my bandwidth is kind of under question here, but I'm committed to the cause. No, I can tell you're very committed. You're very yeah. committed. Now, I know that you, you take over her social media. And so when you have so many people watching you, let's say on a TikTok, is it overwhelming when you're explaining, you know, how to be successful in the corporate space? Well, you know, sometimes I'll be honest, Stephen, sometimes I forget that they're there. Mm. Sometimes I forget that they're there because they all onboard it so quickly. One day they were not there. And then the next day they were there. So when I go on, I just kind of 
I'm doing the things that I normally do and say, hey, I'm going to circle back on some advice. I'm going to follow up on this corporate uh, work that we're all doing here. And I'm going to make sure that we're all successfully closing the loops, except now there's hundreds of thousands of people there. So a lot of people are saying that they're triggered. And, you know, I'm beginning to be triggered by how many people are triggered, if I'm being honest. It's a lot of triggering. Yeah. Um, I, I saw a video on TikTok not too long ago. Uh, this gentleman, he had it, the camera was facing him and he said, and they said, corporate Aaron's not real. And you could hear a woman talking in the background and he turned around. It was a white woman talking and she sounded just to like you. Yeah. What do you what do you say to com comparisons uh, with other people on um, social media having similar conference calls and those kind of things. You know, I think it's very interesting. I saw that video and I remember thinking when I heard, when I was watching it, I said, I don't remember having a one-on-one -on -one with this gentleman. Yeah. So I, it was when I said, wow, I'm talking to this gentleman. I, I had looked through my calendar. I said, did I have a one-on-one -on -one with him? Yeah. And then I saw her and I said, oh, wow. You know, I will say, I thought I was unique. I thought yeah. I was different. I thought yeah. I was the only one. And it turns out that there's hundreds of thousands of me's. But the only problem is they're not coming to the forefront to identify themselves. Yeah. Well, that's kind of been a tricky part is everybody's saying that a bunch of me's exist. Well, where are they? And how come they're not pinging me or liking or following or commenting and saying, this is me. So yeah. I kind of find it hard to believe. I kind of feel like we're like little aliens out there, you know, when, and until we're exposed, until we're cited and kind of pointed at, that's when people will know that we're there. So I kind of, the more that you can say, hey, hold up a picture. This is my corporate errand. The more that can happen, the more that'll ease my mind. I, I can get that. And then there was also a video of there was a you were a tat uh, and on I think it was a, a, a one on one you were having a, and yeah. you were a tat. Yeah. How, how did you how did you get through that? Well, you know, I try to provide a safe space for all of, you know, my direct reports and people who want to talk to me. And I say, hey, if there's ever, you know, any aggression, you need to let out, just let it out, just let it out. I didn't expect to get beat down that day. Yeah. It, was, it was very interesting, but I was very I was very happy that they took the conversation when I invited them to co-create with me that they kind of wanted to insert some violence. And I said, you know what? I'm going to, yes, and I'm going to co-create this moment with you. And I'm going to, I'm going to take these hits. I'm going to, I'm going to take, I'm going to take these frustrations and I'm going to walk them up to the ladder and kind of let them know like, Hey, this is what some of our employees are feeling. But you know, sometimes it happens. Sometimes it's necessary. Sometimes it's the only way that people know how to communicate. But I am still recovering. Yeah, well, well hopefully safe, a quick recovery. Now, some people have um, questioned what's in your mugs that you oh. um, have. Is, uh, what, is it coffee, tea? Uh... Oh, yeah, it's coffee. So some people thought that there was absolutely nothing in here. But there's, well, I don't want to spell it. But there's, right, yeah. there's coffee in there. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I drink, I drink coffee, I, lattes. I'll be more specific. Lattes. Yeah. Latte. So lattes with oat milk, some espresso, brown sugar creamer, cinnamon. Oh, um, what do you, what do you do? I know you're a busy woman. Yeah. All the one on ones, all of yeah. the 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 deliverables. What yeah. do you do to relax? What does corporate Aaron do to relax? Well, I like to kind of open up my spreadsheets and organize the information in there. I like to make sure all my tabs are in alphabetical order. I love to clear out my inbox. Nothing like a good night knowing that your all of your emails are checked. Um, I really love to kind of go over what I'm doing the next day. If there's any meetings where I plan to read to people out loud, I kind of read it out loud to myself. Sometimes mm. the bedtime stories that I give my daughters are some of the memos that I'm going to read the next day. Those are oh. pretty fun. And um, what else do I like to do? I love to detangle lanyards. That's one of my favorite things to do. If I'm ever stressed, I just get a big ball of lanyards and just tangle them up and then untangle them. That's a great time. Sometimes I time myself. It's very, it's very exciting. So yeah, those are the things that I like to do for fun. So I'm sure that you and your family watched the Super Bowl during that performance, during the, the game and the halftime show. Were you, what were you, what were you doing? Oh, well, you know, I, I actually did not watch the Super Bowl. Um, I was working. So my husband, Jared, he watched the Super Bowl. Yeah, Jared. And so, but but I was working. So, but during the halftime show, I, I am a fan of Usher. Um, mm -hmm. And so I did kind of listen to his new album to kind of commemorate this special moment. But I actually put a time in my cow to go back and watch the halftime show at a later time. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, you're such a great worker. What does Lisa say um, to um, 
you know, just so, so much attention that you're getting, you know, of course you're helping her out while she takes some time to focus on her, her other careers. What, what does she say to uh, you getting this recognition? Well, you know, Lise couldn't be more excited. Yeah. I think there are some things that Lise wanted to say that she said, hey, I need you to say these things for me because if I say them, they may go over a different way. So I yeah. think she's actually ecstatic that I can kind of be the mouthpiece for her and it's kind of like a stress reliever. She can kind of lay low and relax while I'm doing all of the work. And another thing to note is she kind of put me in the forefront when she yeah. knew that it was time because she knew the impact that I have. So she was ready for me to kind of burst on the scene and make sure that everybody knows she had to prepare for it. And I said, hey, this is a pivotal time. Once I'm there, I'm going to hit the ground running. I'm going to have my boots on the ground and I'm not going to slow down for anybody. So are you sure? Are you sure you want this? Are you sure? So we had a heart to heart. Our, one -on our hearts had a one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, yeah, you know, this is a pivotal time for you. Are you sure? And she said, I'm ready. So she's excited that now she has a built-in audience for what she wants to do. So she's not looking to convert these eyeballs into cash for brands to kind of just start to pay her to just pump out advertisements. Right. She's happy to have a core audience who can now just truly enjoy what she puts out. Okay. And can you give us, since she, Lisa's not here, what's next for Lisa? You know, that's a great question. So every morning, Lisa gives me a presentation so I can kind of be caught up with her life. That's why I know everything about her. So every, every morning, morning, yeah, every morning I get a daily deck kind of updating every single piece of Lisa's life so I can know everything so I can speak to it. So wow. what's next for her is she wrote the foreword to my book that I have coming out. So okay. I believe that that's going to be very pivotal for her. I can kind of introduce her as an author. So I think it's very exciting for her to kind of have a little section in my book. In so your that's book, coming, right. And that's coming up for her. Another thing is she is going on tour this summer, but it's going to be kind of like a unique tour. So it's mm. like the Lisa B. Experience tour. So cities will get a taste of what Lisa has been doing in Chicago for communities here, she'll kind of take that kind of all over. So there'll be activities all during the day. So it's not just a comedy show tour. It's saying, yeah. hey, Lisa's in your city, connect with her. She's going to have a lot of fun things going throughout the whole day. So that's what's next. What else is next for Lise? Um, there's um, a lot going on. Yeah. There, there, there's a lot of good things. And she's writing more. So she's kind of working on her own book. So I encouraged her. I said, hey, write your own book. So you stay out of yours, right? Yeah. Get, stay out of my book. You write your right. own book. Right. <laughs> okay. okay. And where, um, where can we keep up with everything Lisa has going on? Well, so you can go to her Instagram at Lisa B. Evolving as kind of the hub of everything. And then her website, www.lisabeasley.com, will have, that's where you can get tickets to shows, and that's where you'll be able to see where the tour is, and kind of some other cool things that she's been into. And overall, the website kind of has some cool features where you can just kind of see some other things that yeah. she's done, and things that she's into, and has available for the public. Awesome. Uh, awesome. And um, and for you, what what's next for you? Well, what's next for me? Let's see. I will be circling back, following up and closing the loop for sure. I'm getting ready for my book launch. I'm going to go on a book tour. Awesome. It may be at the same place as where Lisa's tour is. Mm. I'm going to go on a book tour, hopefully. That'd be convenient. That would be convenient. Wouldn't that be nice? Yeah. So that's going to be fun. And that's kind of pretty much it for me. I'm going to keep on doing things like that's kind of like cross collaborating and cut creating with creators like yourself to kind of just awesome. the job, make sure the world is driving that business forward. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> sounds, sounds great. Well, listen, thank you. Give Lisa my best. Um, hey, well, I'll give her a hug for you. Please. Please do. I can't wait to see her on, on, on tour. And uh, Corbin Aaron, keep working hard. What's your title again? I forgot your title. Oh, yeah. Thank you. I'm the manager for the managerial logistics for management at Big Management. Awesome. Well, yeah. Corbin Aaron, thank you so much. I know you have a busy schedule. Thank you for taking time and visiting us. And for more information, uh, go to thestephenishow.com. We'll be right back after this.